tonight we're going to be concluding our Children of God series. And we've been in the midst of this series and we've been talking about our responsibility as adults to preserve the next generation. To pass along the, the faith, to pass along the heritage that God has given us. It's our job to prepare the children of this world to go forth and, and, and face the battles that they're going to have to face. It's our job to prepare them for that. Children are the heritage. But more important, they represent the faith that will be passed on to the next generation. Each generation is like a link in a chain. And each generation connects us to the generation before, all the way back to the original link, which is Jesus Christ Himself. Today, we need to realize that we are part of the same church that He started 2,000 years ago. Each generation. The first church was faithful to carry the heritage of Christ and the faith that we now enjoy. And they passed it to the generation after them. And that generation did the same. And the generation after that. And all the way up until today. In fact, we could really say that we are here because others, those that have come before us, have preserved the heritage. And they have passed the faith to us. Today, each one of us is here. Because somebody else was faithful. And the challenge to us now is, are we going to be faithful? Are we going to be the ones to pass the faith to the next generation? Let's begin in chapter 1 of 2 Timothy, beginning in verse 5. Paul, writing to the young pastor, says, When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in you, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, I am persuaded that in thee also. You are a carrier of the faith today. Because somebody who carried that faith saw you and chose you to be the one through which they would preserve the faith. For some of us, it might have been a parent or a grandparent telling us, teaching us about God. For some of us, it may have been a Sunday school teacher. It may have been a pastor. It may have been a friend. Whoever it was, at some point in your life, somebody was faithful with what God had given them. They had taken that heritage and they had passed it on to you so that you could carry it to the next generation. For me, my grandparents... They carried it throughout their generation. And now I'm the one carrying it for our family. I'm the one, not the only one, but I am carrying that legacy and that heritage to the next generation, to my children and my children's children. God has called us to preserve the faith. Whoever it was, somebody who had faith saw you and passed that faith on to you to preserve it for the next generation. And now it is our turn. We have to do our part. We have to do our part to maintain and preserve the heritage that God has passed on to us. To preserve the faith that He has given us. We're going to have to do our part to instill that faith into the next generation. Look around us today. Look at the generation, my generation, my children's generation. It's a mess. It is a mess. But you know, that's nothing new. There's nothing new. When people were riding around with t-shirts and cigarettes rolled up in their sleeve and their hair slicked back, the parents of that day said, man, this generation's a mess. Do you understand that each generation faces challenges? Each generation. And that's because there is a coordinated plan that the enemy has designed to destroy your heritage. Designed to eliminate the faith of God's people. 
And every generation He fights. And He will continue to fight from now until He finds Himself in the pit. He will fight. Which means we have to realize that we can't just throw in the towel. We've got to fight the battle. We have got to realize that God has called us to preserve the faith. God has called us to preserve the faith. This generation faces its attacks. And the enemy is good at what he does. And the thing that's different this generation is not the attack, but it's those that he's attacking. Back in the day, when you dealt with things, you dealt with adult issues when you were an adult. It was adults and and those types of people who dealt with drunkenness. It was those people who dealt with drugs. It's those people who dealt with depression. It's those people who had to deal with thoughts of suicide. It's those people in their older age. That's no different from today except that now he's attacking the children. Children in therapy because they're ready to kill themselves. Children drunk. Children strung out on drugs. Children feeling worthless. Feeling abandoned. Feeling lonely. Looking for some, some someone to give them some type of affirmation. Children are being attacked. He's leaving them feeling worthless and empty. And all the times, it seems like The world is just resting upon their shoulders. It's nothing new. We just dealt with it when we were older. And now he's bringing it to the children because he's realized if he can destroy them young, then they have no hope when they get older. That's why we have to be diligent when we talk to the children, when we teach the children. We can't just come together and have a good time. There is a battle and there is a fight going on. And if we're not preparing them, all we're doing is keeping them entertained all the way into hell. We have got to realize the truth and we have got to grasp the importance of what we're doing here in the church. These kids face these things in the entire time. We have adults and we have a society that's telling them that God's not going to help them. In fact, they're telling them there is no God. They're telling them and filling them their heads with all of these things which leaves them even more hopeless. You have the heritage. You have the answer. You are the one that can make a difference in their life. But it's up to us to look for the opportunity to instill that faith in them. We can't throw in the towel. And we cannot forfeit the battle. Like those who have come before us, who have faced challenges in the next generation. They refused to quit, but instead they made up in their mind that they would prevail. And they did. And that's why you and I are sitting here today. Because that generation refused to quit. That generation refused to give up. And made it their purpose in life to pass on the faith. Can we realize today that It's too important for us to fail. Can we realize today that failure is not an option, but rather that we must prevail? We have to prevail. And if we can realize what it is that we're preserving in the first place, I think it will give us the strength to go on. In those times when we feel like quitting, if we realize what that heritage really is, I think it will encourage us. Second Timothy verse 6 says, Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. We have got to remember that greater is he that is in us than he that's in the world. We have got to remember that the enemy has a plan and he is implementing that plan. But he is no match for God. 
He is no match for God's people. And He is no match for the church. Because we have the Holy Spirit. You have the power of God residing in you. And He is able tonight. God is able to defeat the enemy. God is able to turn a generation. God is able to intervene and change the heart of man. God is able to do all of those things and much more. He is able even when we're not. He is able even when we feel like we can't go in another step. He can when you feel like you can't. Because the spirit that is within us is not a spirit of fear or defeat. It is a spirit of power. It is a spirit of sound mind. And it is a spirit of love. A love that says, I will lay down my life for that generation. I don't care if it causes me to die. I don't care if I'm witnessing to one of these kids out here and he decides to shoot me dead on the street. I don't care as long as I'm doing what God has called me to do. I have got to reach this generation. And if it means putting myself in danger to do it, then I'm going to have to do it. Because God has given me a heritage to preserve. God has given us that spirit to be witnesses. He has called us to be witnesses so that we can engage the enemy. Not so we can hide from him. He has given us the Spirit so that we can go and we can do the things that He's called us to do. Because He is able tonight. He gives us the ability to prevail against the enemy and against His attacks. God has called us, but we have got to stir up that gift. Too many Christians sitting in churches all across this nation with the Holy Spirit in them. But the only time they want to use it is to speak in tongues. The only time they want to use it is when they can make a spectacle. God did not give you the Spirit so that we could have church. God gave you the Spirit so that we can go out into the world and make a difference. God has called us to do that, but we've got to stir up the gift that is in us. We have got to realize what it is that we're preserving. We are preserving the Holy Spirit itself. It's within us. It is like treasure in this earthen vessel that we need somebody to discover so that it can be passed on to them. It's like a flame of fire that needs to be passed to the next candle in order to keep it burning and burning bright. We cannot allow this heritage and this faith that we have to die with this generation. We have to realize that the power of God resides in us and He is able even when we are not. We've got to stir up the gift. We've got to ignite that fire that is within us. We have got to make up in our minds that we are going to do what God has called us to do. We've got to light the passion that is within us. And we've got to get after it. Plain and simple, we have got to be about His business. Because there is a generation at stake. Our heritage and our faith depends on it. Going on in verse 8. He says, Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me His prisoner. But be thou partaker of the afflictions of the Gospel, according to the power of God, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, Not according to our works, but according to His own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. If we're going to preserve the faith, then we cannot be ashamed of the Gospel. We cannot allow ourselves to be bullied into the church. We cannot allow ourselves to be pushed out of the public life. We have got to refuse to be ashamed. What is there to be ashamed of? You hold life in your hands. You have the ability to change a world. 
Everybody else is out here trying to psychoanalyze and figure out why the world's so bad and everybody's got answers that answers and answers and none of their answers work. But what you have has worked time after time after time. You hold the answer. And we cannot be ashamed of that answer. We cannot be ashamed of the Gospel. But instead, we must be willing to step out and face the persecution that's going to come with righteous living. Jesus said, those who live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. It's going to happen. Because you are in the midst of a battle today. We may be sitting here thinking that we have a peaceful nation. But you are in the midst of a spiritual war. And it is raging all around you. And I think that's part of the issue with America today is that we have gotten out of the war mindset. Those those who were alive during World War II and, and all the other conflicts that we've gone through, you watched as a nation came alive with the war effort and the support. People did without so that it could go towards the soldiers. People people stopped buying certain things. And they didn't gripe and they didn't complain because they only got one thing of flour a month. Because they knew that there was a purpose. We're in the midst of a battle and because there's a battle, it's desperate times. It's time to sacrifice, and we've got to sacrifice together, and we've got to pull together if we're going to win the war. But we don't think that way anymore. Because we're not at war. We're not at war. Even the wars that we're in today, those are over there. We don't even think about them today. But you are in the midst of a battle, in the midst of a war, and we cannot win that war by hiding in the church. We've got to stick our heads out and risk getting shot. God gives you the armor for a purpose. And it's not to hang on our wall as a decoration. It's so that we can put it on and go into the battle. God has called us to fight the good fight. We cannot just hide until Jesus comes. We have got to get out there. We have to be willing to take the shrapnel. We have to be willing to get into the foxhole. We've got to be willing to sacrifice some things in our life in order to win the war. God is calling us to preserve the heritage. That's the reason that you're saved today. The reason you're saved today is because God wants you to make an impact in somebody else's life. You are here to preserve the faith. It is your holy calling, as Paul calls it. Your holy calling is to preserve the faith, to pass it to the next generation, to spread it, to build the kingdom of God. That is your holy calling. And not to do what pleases us, but to do what pleases Him. It doesn't please God one bit when I buy a new big screen TV. I'm convinced it doesn't please him one bit. I think he might look at it and go, okay. But I doubt if I doubt if God is wanting to come over and watch the game on my TV. I don't think God cares one iota when I buy a new car or when I get a raise or any of those things. Because in all honesty, God is more concerned with me doing His will than me promoting myself. Now, if God promotes you, then praise God for it. But understand, God is calling us to do more than just be successful in business. He's calling us to do a whole lot more than to just have a career, or to buy a home, or to purchase a car, or to have things. God is calling us to a much greater thing. And that is to do what pleases Him. To do the good works that He has before ordained for us to do. And that is to take the Gospel and pass it on to the next generation. That is what He's called us to do. More than anything else, the question we need to ask ourselves is, am I doing what God's called me to do? 
Because everything He calls us to do revolves around one purpose and one purpose only, and that's building His kingdom. Tonight, we've got to be about His work. We've got to go forth and make disciples to pass along the faith. In verse 10, He says, But is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who hath abolished death and has brought life and immortality to light through the Gospel, whereunto I am appointed a preacher and an apostle and a teacher to the Gentiles. For the which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed to him against that day. When you understand this truth, when you understand what I just read, you'll be ready to do anything for the kingdom of God. You'll be willing to step out and go into battle. Because for the believer, there is no death. Do you understand that today? For the believer, there is no death. There is only immortality, and there is only life eternal. And when you understand that, then you can face the enemy head on. You don't have to be afraid. You don't have to be afraid of his threats. You don't have to be afraid of his attacks. You don't have to be afraid of what might happen to you because you understand, you know what? I'm immortal. I am immortal today through Jesus Christ. There is only life for me after this. If I lay down this body, there is life. There is nothing the enemy can do to take that from you. And if you will give your life in the pursuit of furthering the Gospel, there is no greater way to leave this world. I believe when Paul went to have his head removed from his body, I believe he went with confidence, knowing that the things of this world were not even worthy to be compared to the things that awaited him in heaven. Realizing that this life is only temporary, but that life is eternal. Realizing that this life is filled with nothing but pain and disappointment and temporal things. But that life is joy unspeakable and full of glory. So why back down? Why forfeit? Why let the enemy win? Why let him destroy this faith? Because God is able. God is able. He is able to make you victorious. He is able to keep you. And when He has you, nothing can take you out of His hand. Not even death itself can remove you from His hand. It says, neither tribulation, not distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, not even the sword can separate you from God. Neither height, nor depth, nor any other creature can separate you from God. Not even death, nor life, angels or principalities, powers, things present, or even things to come, could keep you from God's love and His grace. He has you. And He is able today. He is able to defeat the enemy that comes against you. He is able to give you victory. So live boldly in your life. Don't cower in fear. Don't wave the white flag. Don't hide in a pew. Get out. Confront the enemy. Head on. Be like Jonathan. Be like Jonathan and his armor bearer who just made up in their mind to say, you know what? I don't care if nobody else goes. You and me, we're going. And we're going to fight the enemy. And we're just going to jump out and say, hey, here we are. What's the worst that can happen? Because for us, we are immortal. 
We've got to live boldly. Live life with passion and with purpose. Live like the fate of your faith depends on it. Because it does. The fate of Christianity rests in your hands today. The faith that you have enjoyed your entire life, or up to this point, rests in your hands. We have got to pass it to the next generation. Verse 13 says, Hold fast to the form of sound words, which thou hast heard of me in faith and love which is in Jesus Christ. That good thing which was committed unto thee, keep by the Holy Ghost which dwelleth in us. That good thing which was given to us, our heritage, our faith, our doctrine, we've got to keep it. That word keep means we've got to watch, we've got to preserve it. It's our job to make sure that it makes it to the next generation. God is able to keep that which you've given to Him. And He's asking us to keep that which He's given to us. Tonight, God is able. When you look around you, and you see the state of this world, when you see the people lost, sometimes it's overwhelming. We ask ourselves, what could I possibly do to change any of this? God is able. And because God is able, you are able. Because God dwells in you. God is able to give you victory. God is able to use you to change hearts. God is able to to help you to overcome. You are able to conquer through Jesus. You are able to set people free. You are able to change lives. And you are able to change this world. You are able to turn it upside down. Because He is able. Tonight, I just wish we could understand that and grasp that concept. That whatever you face, God is able. God is able. When you were messed up in your life, God was able. And He rescued you. He's still able. Those people that are around you that seem like there is no hope, He is able. He is able to use you. He is able to give you strength. He is able to preserve you. He is able to keep you. There is no reason for us to throw in the towel. When we feel like we can't, He's able. And in fact, it's often when we get to the point where we can't that God is the most, shows His strength the most. Because in our weakness, He is made strong. In our foolishness, He is made wise. God looks for the least of these to show His glory the most. And tonight, I don't know where you are and I don't know how you feel and I don't know what you are thinking when you think about the people that God's called you to reach. If you're anything like me, you're scratching your head and you're asking, how in the world am I going to do that? How in the world am I going to reach a city for Jesus Christ? How? At this point, I know about this much. But I know He's able. I know He's able. I know that He's able to double the size of this congregation. I know that He's able to meet every need. We've watched Him do it over and over again. When other people were standing around watching this church, waiting for the day that we were going to hang a sign on the door and walk away. But God is able. We're not here to throw in the towel. He has not called us to surrender. He has called us to conquer. He has called us to beat down the gates of hell and destroy the works of the enemy. He has called us to set the captives free. He has called us 
to preserve the faith. Not hold it and let it die with us, but to pass it to the next generation. Who has God placed in your life today that He wants you to pass the faith on? Maybe it's a neighbor. Maybe it's a child. Maybe it's a grandchild. God has called us to pass it on. Because the battle's not going to stop with us. The battle will rage until, from now until eternity. And we have got to give the next generation what they need to survive the battle. And you have it. You have what they need.